To find the angle optimal triangulation, we want to iteratively do small improvements. And the small improvements we want to do via edge flaps. And then we want to find so-called legal triangulations and relate them to the angle optimal ones. So if we look at our example from here, then we say that this edge is illegal if we can improve it by doing a flip. And a flip is remove this edge and instead add the other one in this quadrilateral that we get from removing the edge. And improving means looking at the angles. Here we had six angles and the minimum of them is 30 degrees. Here we also had six angles, but the minimum of them is 60 degrees. That means we improved locally the angle vector by flipping this edge to this one. So this is an illegal edge. So if we have an illegal edge and we take the triangulation we get from the flip, then the angle vector for this triangulation is better than the angle vector of the old one. So we keep on improving the angle vector as long as we flip illegal edges. Now we want to do some proofs. And for that we need a very classical theorem that probably most of you know, which is Thales' theorem. The Thales' theorem says that the diameter of a circle always subtends a right angle to any point on the circle. So if we have any segment and we take the circle around the endpoints, then whatever point on the circle we take, we always get a right angle if we connect it to the two endpoints. Here we have a right angle and here also. This is the version that you probably know, but there is an extended version of this, which is called, or we can call the Thales++. Plus Plus. So let's say we have any disk, we take any line through this disk, then this gives us a segment between two points on the boundary of the disk. Now whatever points on the boundary of this disk I take, as long as they are on the same side, then we always get the exact same angle. If I take any point inside the disk, then this gives us a larger angle. And if I take a point outside the disk, then that gives us a smaller angle. And we want to use this theorem to figure out what kind of edges in our triangulation can be illegal by looking again at these circles around the edges. So let's say that we have two triangles here, one between three points P, R and Q, and one between P, Q and S. And we take the disk that is defined by the first triangle by the three points P, R and Q. Then we want to prove that this edge is illegal if S lies inside the disk. If it lies exactly on the boundary or outside the disk, then it is not an illegal edge. Let's try to prove this. First, what happens if these four points are not in convex position? So that means that our vertex S lies inside here. Well, then these are not triangles, because now if we take P, R and Q, then we have a point inside, so this cannot be a triangle of our triangulation. It means we must have convex position anyway. And to prove that this edge is illegal, we can directly use the Thales++. Plus plus. So we want to show that for all the angles in the triangulation after the flip, there is an angle in the original triangulation that is smaller. Let's try to do that. We have in the new triangulation these two angles. For both of them we have these smaller ones here. So for these two angles we found a smaller one in the blue but we still have these four angles. Let's say we want to look at this angle here between Q, R and S. We first want to extend the segment R, S until we hit the disk that gives us a new point S prime and we connect this one to P and Q. And now I want to look at the segment between Q and S prime and I want to use that as the base segment for our, our Thales++. Plus plus. So the Thales++ plus plus tells us if we look at this angle A prime and at this angle between S prime P and Q, they are exactly the same because we have the segment and they both lie on the circle. But now we have this smaller uh, angle here in the blue triangulation. So also for alpha prime, we found a smaller angle alpha. And exactly the same we can do for all these three other angles. So for each of them, we find a smaller angle in the blue triangulation. 
And then since we found a smaller angle for each of them, that means that the minimum of the blue angles has to be smaller than the minimum of the green. And this is the whole proof of the lemma. And one interesting note is, if S does lie on the boundary of this disk, then neither of these two edges is illegal. Because if we take the blue triangulation, then we can show that S is not in the interior of the disk, so PQ is not illegal. If we take the green triangulation, then P is not in the interior of the disk, so SR is not illegal. That means both of them are illegal. That's important because it tells us that there are more than one legal triangulation. It can happen that we have four points on the same circle and then well, however we flip the edge inside, we always have a legal triangulation. And we call a triangulation legal if it has no illegal edges. Now how can we prove that a legal triangulation exists? Can you do that? There's a very simple algorithm. We start with any triangulation, and while there is an illegal edge, we flip it. And, and when we cannot do a flip anymore, when we don't find a legal edge, then we return the triangulation. Of course, the question is why does this terminate? Why can we not have an infinite loop where maybe we keep flipping the same few edges? In every flip, the angle vector goes up. And also, there's a finite number of triangulations in P. You can get a bound on the number of triangulations by the Catalan numbers. But if you only need that it's uh, finite, you can imagine, take your endpoints, there are n squared possible segments, and each of those can be in the triangulation or not. So an almost trivial upper bound on the number of triangulations is 2 to the n squared, because you have only have that many combinations of segments that are in the triangulation or not. So after some finite number of steps, this has to terminate. So this algorithm proves us the existence. So clearly, every angle optimal triangulation is a legal one. Because if it would be illegal, we could improve it and then it cannot be angle optimal. But what about the other direction? Is every legal triangulation also angle optimal? Or could it maybe be that we have to take some detour, add some more illegal edges until we're able to get to a legal triangulation again that maybe has a better angle vector? And to prove that, we need even another type of triangulation.